Welcome back. So today I'm going to be diving into uh, England again. Um, and I just reacted to a video of can the queen legally get away with murder and just what power she has. And I was blown away. Um, we always look as Americans look at her as, you know, just like a figurehead um, and not, you know, tons of powers anymore. You know, they kind of moved on from that. There's parliament, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I was kind of blown away by legally as as ridiculous as, as the scenarios may be she has she's like one of the most powerful women people leaders on earth um hands down with the powers legally that she has um so i just wanted to watch this video and this is by today i learned the youtube channel really enjoying these videos very informative i'm learning so much in every video like last video i was just so this one is what powers does the queen actually have? So this will be good to kind of um, compare to the previous video I have. I know she has legally an insane amount of power, but what does she actually have? And maybe this will be, um, she'll have more powers than I thought or le less powers um, legally. So let's just jump in. Let's see what she she has and uh, let's let's learn together. Here we go. And give me any information that you can any additional information or thoughts to this because I am learning a lot. I love England. I'm planning to go back uh, pretty soon. I, I think like 2022, um, something along those lines. So I need to learn more. Let's do this. So a short while ago, we put out a video about the fact that Queen Elizabeth II neither needs a passport nor a driving license thanks to a quirk of British law. But what other powers does the Queen of Many Titles have, and what could she theoretically do if she decided to flex the full might of the authority that she wields? As yes, it turns out, thanks to, to the royal prerogative, a terrifying amount, if she really felt like it, or at least that's assuming Parliament went by the letter of the law and that the people didn't decide to stage a small revolt. In reality, the Queen rarely exerts even a fraction of the power that she theoretically wields, as it's kept in check by the only person in the UK who can tell her what to do, and that's herself. Yeah. This is very much learn. a calculated move on her part in order to stay in the good graces of her subjects. She also voluntarily pays her taxes, even though she's not technically obligated to, and that helps with people's opinion of her. Not only does she avoid openly flexing her political might, she also tends to keep her opinions outside of the public sphere. As historian Frank Prohaska notes, the real secret of royal influence is saying nothing. And anything the Queen does say publicly is pretty anodyne. The minute a monarch or many of the royals say anything remotely political or opinionated, they alienate people and they yeah. lose some power. Yeah, because you could say the most amazing thing. You could feel like, <clears throat> just as a leader in general, you could say you could single-handedly you know, cure cancer. But there's always, always, always going to be that group that will just not like what you're for whatever reason just not like what you're saying how you're doing it how, how you're saying it there's there's always those people so i can see that no matter how little of a group there may be that's against you there there will be unfortunately always those people and those groups that you kind of alienate and um have to not like you so if you like they said if you say kind of nothing and be a figurehead and, and be you know public publicly around and You'll be liked by everyone, um, and she's done a phenomenal job. She's been a phenomenal queen, what she's been through. Um, we have a lot of respect for her. I feel like everywhere around the world just has the utmost respect for the queen. Um, yeah, so I, I'm agreeing with this as maybe unfortunate as it is. This silence played a large part in how the British monarchy survived post-World War I when other European royal families didn't. In fact, for nearly two decades now, the monarchy has regularly had polls run and focus groups put together to keep track of how the general public feels about them I and bet. their various actions. They also have on payroll individuals whose job it is to ensure the Queen stays in the public eye and in a way that is most likely to endear her to her subjects. Mm -hmm. Similar to politicians who rely on the voting public, with each public change she presents, right down to the carrying of a cell phone or not, carefully calculated in terms of the impact. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I mean, I'm sure they do this everywhere, but it's just interesting to see for the United States when elections are going on, you'll see you'll see a candidate in, you know, New York and, and L.A. and stuff like that, and they're just in suits. Like the more, I guess, old school areas like the East Coast are in suits. It's like very professional. They have their pin. But when they go to like the Midwest or South, they will wear, you know, a flannel and jeans and, you know, they want to be, they want to make a connection with the audience. They want to be like, I am one of you. 
So I could see that here. Um, that's what we see, and I'm sure they do that everywhere. Everything is so, so, you know, you have this whole team behind you, and it's such a massive, you get tens of millions of dollars pouring in to, you know, help your campaign. And you just, you want them to be like, I am one of you. I'm going to help you. So it's just kind of interesting to see as they go around the U.S. and even around the world what they wear to uh, make a connection with the audience. It might have. While this may seem only self-serving, the Queen has a very lengthy track record as an admirable public servant and is yeah. also acutely oh, aware yeah. that she is a prominent public face representing her subjects. So is keen on avoiding being viewed in a bad light, lest she in turn paint them in a bad light by her actions. As she noted at the tender age of 21 in a speech to the Commonwealth she gave on her birthday, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. Very humble too, very humble, very respectful. And the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. Surprisingly, for many years, the full extent of exactly what powers the queen handed off to the government, but technically retained, weren't publicly known. That is, until 2003, when the government released a partial list of the things it can do on the queen's behalf. For the most part, the uh. list confirms that the government could do things to save the queen time, such as issue or revoke passports, which simply wouldn't be a feasible thing to be the sole prerogative of the crown in a modern society. However, some were actually slightly worried by some of the things she could do, like declare war, which under rules of royal prerogative can be done without consulting parliament. On top of that, the video. queen is totally immune from prosecution and is that considered too. above the law in the UK. And further, as a head of state, she also enjoys diplomatic immunity in any foreign country she happens to visit. As such, she could commit any crime conceivable anywhere on earth, at could. least as the law currently stands, and suffer no legal consequences for doing so. However, as with everything else, she's generally exceptionally careful to ensure that she doesn't break any laws. Of course, what she does in private is completely her own affair, despite her prominent political position, as she is exempt from freedom of information requests. So, moving on, because technically speaking, the people of Britain are not citizens, but subjects of the monarch, she could have anyone she wanted arrested and presumably seize their property or land for the crown. Speaking of which, the Queen owns all of the seabeds around the UK and can commandeer any ship found in British waters for service to the realm. Oddly enough, she also has first dibs on any whales that wash up on shore. The Queen could also administer any manner of punishment to an individual who offended or otherwise displeased her, as the Crown has prerogative power to keep the peace within the realm. And since she's immune from prosecution, nobody could really do anything if this punishment wasn't entirely within the scope of the law. If the government tried to stop her, the Queen could decimate the British political landscape by dissolving Parliament and appointing mm -hmm. anyone she felt like as Prime Minister. This is because it's the Queen's duty to appoint the Prime Minister and she could, in theory, appoint anyone she wanted to the position, regardless of the way the... And I feel like she has so much respect and she's been around and proved herself decade after decade that she could probably pull a lot of this stuff off. Um, whereas if you get a new, eventually, you know, king or queen in the future, since they don't have that respect for so long, I don't know how much... I feel like whoever comes in next will be in a way, less powerful than her because she has just been in it forever. She's proven herself. Everyone, like, the respect that she has. Um, she's honorable. She's noble. And, you know, all these things that people look up to. Um, and she's been around, you know, for so long. I, I was saying in the last video, I think she's been in, she's, like, the longest reigning monarch ever passing. I think it was Queen of Victoria. That was, uh, like, uh, something along, like, 64 years she ruled. Um, if I'm right with Queen of Victoria, but she's at like around 70 now, if not past that. Um, this video is from 2017, so just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, I, the amount of power that she has, we look at her as, you know, a figurehead and not much power, but she actually does. If she really wanted to flex her muscles, she could just, she could really just rule, <laughs> rule that, uh, that nation really heavily choose her own parliament, choose her own prime minister, you know. In a way, they could be super corrupt, but in a way, they could also be really good. But she's, you know, very, uh, very honorable and just lets the system, believes in the system and believes in, in England. And it's worked out really, really, really well for them.
British public voted in an election. On top of that, in the event the Queen didn't like the outcome of an election, for instance, if she didn't like the replacement parliament members that were voted in, she could just call for another one using royal prerogative until she got the parliament she wanted. Not that she'd need to, because if she really wanted, she'd just bring in the army to keep everyone in line. But yeah. how does that work? How does she control the army? Well, that's because the Queen is also the commander-in-chief of the entire British military, with every officer, soldier, sailor, and pilot swearing allegiance to the crown mm -hmm. and nobody else. They're not you know called that? Her Majesty's Armed Forces for nothing. Thing. Being considered the ultimate authority on all British military matters, the Queen could authorize a nuclear strike on France or make North Korea an ally, as she has the power to declare both war and peace with foreign nations. As for laws, while technically the Queen can't create new laws, she can only sign them into law after they've been decided upon by I Parliament. In fact, her royal assent is required to make the law official after being passed by Parliament in the first place. She could appoint ministers who'd make any laws she wanted a reality and then just sign them into law that way. Beyond royal assent, there's also the Queen's consent, which requires she give her consent before any law that affects the interests of the monarchy can even be discussed at all in Parliament. She actually has used this power before, such as in 1999 when she she refused to allow the discussion of a bill that would have given Parliament power to authorize military strikes in Iraq instead of needing her authorization. So, well, that's all on the political Dang. side. But See, it that's, I, I want to learn more about that too, like what she's stopped. Either A, what she has used to like, you know, flex her muscles and kind of her power and stuff like that, where she just stopped that bill. Because, And I agree with her for that, I feel like, because she's been so, that country's been on such a good path i feel like for the most part with her kind of as a figurehead and kind of ruling in a way um has a lot of influence so i want to know more of what what she's done it doesn't stop here the queen technically has a sort of power not only over her subjects physical beings but also their souls well, how? Well, that's because she's also the head of the Church of England, including of having the power to appoint archbishops and power over many other such matters concerning the Church. Okay. As for most of these powers that technically allow her to rule with an iron fist, as previously mentioned, the Queen is hesitant to ever use them in such a way that would displease her subjects, and certainly mm -hmm. isn't about to disregard their representatives in Parliament. I feel like they're, they're uh, like William and Kate. They are kind of the same... Um, same way as she is that's kind of they, they found like the formula that works you kind of just stay out of all the politics and keep your opinions kind of to yourself it seems like as good or bad as that is um and just be generally liked and the figureheads and you know just help help the world in ways that you can um yeah it seems like they're really gearing those two to be like her and, and rule like her and just kind of be in the back seat but still you know the figurehead and it, just you know inspire the nation and and keep them going and maybe i'm wrong with this if you live there please let me know um of course they'll be out out and about more but I, it's just so rare that i see any I, I don't see anything bad from them um and everything that they do is more just seems like kind of in the background not not they're never like spearheading anything so However, these powers still exist for a variety of reasons, including potentially being needed in times of extreme crisis. That said, just because she isn't in the practice of exercising her... Since it's, you know, we're, we're rounding out COVID and stuff, what they just said right there, I think I heard um, that she opened up some, I don't know what it was, but some of her places that she lives to like COVID patients or something like that to like help help get people away and like quarantine people. So something along those lines where she like opened up some of her royal palaces or the gardens to just kind of um, cope with this uh, in some way. I don't, I just heard something long time ago that she was just like, hey, here, here's some of the royal places I serve you here. This will help you out. It's opened up to you. And I don't know if it's the palace or just like the, the, the grounds around it. Um, but let me know about that. I'm probably going to search this up after and I hope I'm correct, but seems like she's always there for the people and what's best for them. And I thought that was a phenomenal move. Her powers against the will of the people, it doesn't mean she isn't occasionally an active political powerhouse in private. Extremely well respected and known worldwide Absolutely. with the ability to bend the ear of most heads of state, mm -hmm. the influence the Queen wields is difficult to quantify, but as noted in an article discussing why the BBC named the Queen the most powerful woman in the world in their list of 100 most powerful women, 
Her Majesty's power is more about influence. A discreet nod of the head, yeah. a polite word in the ear of a prime minister at their weekly meeting, or a strategic patronage of a cause being overlooked by the government is how she can indirectly affect our world without us even knowing. Well, to conclude, the Queen has many powers she could theoretically legally use to her own ends unless her subjects and Parliament simply decided to stage a revolution. However, she generally avoids doing anything overt that might upset her subjects and otherwise simply works in the background, more or less in an advisory role when she feels there is a need. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. Now, if you are interested in protecting your privacy online, I did enjoy that video. I, I like those a lot. Um, I find it very interesting. Yeah, because I can't even imagine who would be more powerful, you know, like you said, as a woman than her. Um, who, who's the, I think, Chancellor of Germany? Um, Markle or something like that. Of course, she's, I'm sure she's on that list. Um, she's been, you know, the head of Germany for so long. And I can't even imagine what power she has. Another video idea. But it's nothing near, A, the influence or the power in theory and law that the Queen of England has at all. Um, yeah, I, I could not even, I can't even fathom who would be even, even near the Queen of England of, of like power. And then the influence, I feel like, like he said, is just much more, she could, she could have the power um, in theory and law. But the influence that she has, you know, around the world, the Commonwealth, yes, of course. Um, America, yeah, maybe less so than, than just Commonwealth, but still a lot here. I mean, we still really respect her over here. We're, I think we're really into that. The whole royal thing um, seems very popular. And um, yeah, then just even other countries, like if she could go to like any country in the world, I feel like, and then just, just respect, just like, you know, she's she's been around forever and um, has done a, an amazing job with what she does. And just very, very, I know I keep saying it, but extremely respected, probably one of the most respected people in the world, if not the most. Um, once again, I don't even know who would be more, more respected than the queen, and she's proven it. So I like these videos. I'm gonna watch definitely more. I learn so much every single time. Um, thank you for watching it with me. I hope you learned something. Let me know if there's anything else you could add to this. I know there's, probably infinite things that I could learn off, you know, the Queen's powers, the Queen's England, etc. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll dive into more. I just keep learning more and more. And until next time in, I'm in England, I'll actually know, know a lot more about England, its politics, the Queen, powers, geography, military, all the things that I'm interested in. So if you like that, you know, stick around and join me for future videos. So. Until next time, keep on watching, keep on learning, and uh, I'll see you then.